The shocking details of 81.6% and 141% increases to Social Security, including retirement, disability, SSDI, survivors, spousal, and SSI beneficiaries. I have all the details and exactly what you need to know right here in the video. Let's get right into it. I know in this video, I do want to share with you the shocking details of a report that was released talking about 81.6% and 141% increases that directly impacts well over 71 million beneficiaries of the benefits administered by Social Security, including those beneficiaries I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Now, this is something I certainly want to bring to your attention so you can see what is clearly going on. This is some shocking information, but at the end of the day, it's actually not all that surprising, and you'll exactly see why here in this video. Let's get right into it. Really fast before we do, thanks for joining me. If you have not done so yet, make sure to do yourself a huge, huge favor. Hit that subscribe button right down below the video. It is totally free to do so and I'm here for you right by your side every single day to advocate on your behalf as well as to keep you updated with everything going on right now as we all know things are changing very rapidly right now it's a super busy time things are happening super fast and there's a lot of bills packages proposals new announcements things like this that may impact you your money your benefits your lifestyle your bank account and anything popping up you can possibly grab or take advantage of including but not limited to money benefits raises to benefits checks programs stimulus stimulus checks monthly checks and again the list goes on and on. A lot of things are happening. It's a super busy time, a very busy year, and I'm here for you right by your side every single day to help you out in any way that I possibly can. So again, do yourself a huge favor. Subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and feel free to share this video or any other share on the channel with your friends, family, social media, with that share button right down below the video next to the subscribe button. All right, thank you so much. Let's get into it and talk about these massive percentage increases, 81.6% and 141%. And what do they mean for the fixed income beneficiaries that I mentioned at the beginning of the video? Again, very important. Now, again, does your local news tell you about this stuff? Highly doubt it. Does Social Security come out and tell you this stuff? Nope, they certainly do. Uh, don't. Do lawmakers come out and call you or send you nice little letters and say, oh my, look at this, everybody. Here's something I want to bring to your attention. Nope, they don't, right? Which is why I want to bring it to your attention because as a beneficiary, it's your right to know this stuff. You probably want to know because at the end of the day, like I've been saying for a long time now, they continue to stiff beneficiaries. We're sick of it. We're sick and tired of it. But again, let me share with you the details of this report here and what they're pointing out. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take we're going to take a time frame starting from the year 2000 through the end of 2023, a 23-year period of time, okay? We're going to take into consideration all of the COLA raises, the cost of living adjustments for this entire time frame. 23 years of time and we're going to adjust benefits by 81.6%, okay? So over that 23 year period of time, the year 2000 through 2023, we got 81.6% uh, in raises to benefits through the COLA. Now, when you look at it that way, we're all smiles, right? We're like, wow, <laughs> that's awesome. That's incredible right there. 81.6%, I never would have guessed. I would have guessed it was like 22%, right? But no, that's what it comes down to. So that's a nice little raise to benefits, right? We're thinking, oh, this is pretty good. This is, you know, this is awesome. It's cool to be a Social Security beneficiary. Yeah, totally, right? However, that's a great number until we look at the next number, 141%, okay? Do you want to take a guess at what that could be? Now, I know you're right. Everybody here in the community is very smart. I know I have 100% faith in you that you are guessing the right answer right now, okay? You're thinking of it. You're probably writing it down below in the comment section. Maybe you are, or maybe you're saying it out loud. Maybe you're yelling at the screen. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just simply saying, I know you know what I'm about to say. Guess what? During that same 23-year period of time, from the year 2000 through the end of 2023, 100 uh, sorry, 141% increase in expenses. Yep, you nailed it. I know you got it 100% right. So yes, the same period of time, the same 23-year period of time, uh, prices on goods and services, like everything, you could be talking anything. It could be housing, rents, um, it could be food, it could be clothes, it could be transportation, vehicles, shoes, anything. A uh, haircut, glasses, literally everything. Prescriptions, it doesn't matter. Goods and services, that encompasses everything you can buy, okay? You go out to the store, you go anywhere where you can buy a good or a service, and they've all increased at the, during that same period of time, that 23-year period of time, by 141% uh, during that same period of time. Now, 
wait, I'm seeing a little bit of a discrepancy, right? Because I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm wrong, but um, I'm pretty sure that the cost of living adjustment, the COLA, is supposed to adjust for the annual cost of living, hence the name, right? Cost of living adjustment. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong again. I don't think so. I'm just trying to give the benefit of the doubt here, but maybe... Um, the COLA was supposed to be, I don't know, keeping up with real expenses, 141%, but it didn't. There's a discrepancy. Hmm. Let's run the math on this, okay? So benefits increased again, 100, or sorry, no, they did not increase 100. Sorry, I said that wrong. Uh, benefits increased by 81.6% over 23 years of time. Expenses increased by 141%. A difference of, well, I don't know. Let me run the math in my head really quick. Um... What is that? 141. So it's 41, 51 plus about 8.4. Uh, it's about 8, uh, 59.4%. So there you go. It's a difference of 59.4%. I think my math is correct. Feel free to check it if you if you want to check that for me. Um, but again, I think it's about 59.4% is the discrepancy here. That is nuts. Okay. That is completely nuts. Now, if it was a discrepancy of like, I don't know, 5% or 7% or maybe even 10%, you know, that wouldn't be very cool either, but I think we could probably say, okay, fine, you know, things got away a little bit. But a 59.4% difference or discrepancy, that's nuts. I mean, seriously, that is not acceptable right there. That is nearly 60% difference between how much prices have increased, 141%, and how much benefits have increased for the beneficiaries of 81.6%, right? That's huge. We're not talking like, you know, $3 here. We're not talking $5. We're talking hundreds of dollars in difference on a monthly basis for the average beneficiary who is not getting benefits because the COLAs didn't keep up. Again, huge shock here, right? You're surprised. I know I can see it, right? No, you're not surprised. We all knew this. This is no big deal. Well, it is a big deal, but I'm saying is it's not like a huge surprise. Like, oh my, I never saw this one coming. We know the COLA, it does not work. I mean, here's the thing. The coal is great, but at the end of the day, it does not do anything for the beneficiary because benefits are reduced. Another thing too as well, which does not take into consideration here in these numbers, is the Medicare Part B premium, which uh, as of the last few years here has been taking away virtually all the COLA as well, right? So again, what I'd love to do on this as well, I'd love to go back and rewind the tape on this thing to go back to the year 2000 and figure out what were Medicare Part B premiums then in the year 2000 compared to what they are now, you know, increasing over that 23 year period of time. I would love to take that into consideration as well because that is not calculated into that 141% of expenses. So I would love to calculate that number as well to figure out exa exactly how much did the Medicare Part B premium go up as well and add that onto it because that's a real expense the most beneficiaries are also paying on top of how much you pay extra today for the regular things. The milk, the bread, the eggs, the haircut, the glasses, the prescriptions, the shoes, the, the t-shirt, again, the sweatshirt, whatever. Everything that we're buying, the clothes, the gas in the car, the insurance on the car, everything has all gone up as well. So that'd be another factor as well to calculate into it. And I may just do that because it might be very interesting to figure that out or you know, it might be very frustrating as well <laughs> to see that number and to figure out, oh, look at that. The benefits have really fallen behind. So these are the numbers I want to share with you really quickly here because this is a report that was just released not that long ago. And I want to bring this to your attention because this is something that is certainly that, uh, you know, going to impact your benefits and it is already impacting your benefits. And in my opinion, this is something you probably want to know about just because, you know, at the end of the day, can we do anything about it? Unfortunately, we cannot do anything about this, but... Is it something we want to be aware of just to know that, hey, my theory, my ideas, my, you know, conspiracy of, hey, the COLA is not keeping up with the benefits? Yeah, it's 100% correct. We know this, okay? And again, these numbers here prove it that it's falling significantly behind. Now, one more quick thing I want to throw out there. Changing the COLA from the CPIW, what it is now, to the CPIE, would that really help the cause here? Honestly, it would not, okay? It would not have filled the gap of this nearly 60% discrepancy. It just wouldn't have. I've run the numbers on it. I've looked at the reports and stuff like this. Generally, the, the COLA for the, or sorry, generally the, the CPIE runs about 
2%, give or take a little bit hotter than the uh, the CPIW over a 10 year period of time. So over this call at 23 year period of time, the CPIE versus the CPIW only would have accounted for maybe, I don't know, 5% maybe, it would not have done the difference here. Okay, so fine. Maybe we'd be looking at a discrepancy of say 55% versus nearly 60%. Okay, well that's a little bit of help, but it's not much, right? It would not have filled the gap here. What they really need to do is when they do these reportings on the inflation data, give us the real numbers behind inflation as in how much our price is really going up rather than what they just want us to believe prices are going up so that you know it doesn't look as bad, right? Remember, at the end of the day, when they give us inflation numbers, do they want the numbers to look huge? Not really, because it looks bad. It makes it look really, really bad when inflation is really high and all of a sudden all of us are looking at it and saying, wow, inflation has gone up that much this year or this month, a month over month, something like this. It just looks really bad. Does that make us want to go out and spend a bunch of money? No. Does that stimulate the economy? No. What do they want us to do? Spend, spend money. They want us to buy stuff. So what can they do? If they, tell us, if they tell us that inflation has gone up less and inflation is just holding steady at, you know, whatever it is, then it makes us feel good about ourselves. We go out and spend money, right? And, you know, we look at our receipts and stuff like that. So anyway, I want to bring this report to your attention really quickly here. Of course, I'll continue watching everything very closely here. Any other details about this like this, uh, that's going on right now that may impact your benefits or anything like that, of course, I'll continue to bring it to your attention right away. So if you have not done so, again, make sure to subscribe down below. Totally free to do so. As long as you're down there, make sure to share this video with your friends, send me social media. There's a share button right next to the subscribe button as well. Make sure to hit that. Go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel, including those that I have linked down below in the description or at the the top of the comment section, those ones as well. And as always, leave your comments, your questions, your feedback down below. Until next time, enjoy your day. Take care. Have a good one. And I'll catch you again later.